Robin, we get to meet the guy that flies that two bear air all over the place, Jordan White. Well, hello, gentlemen, and thank you for having me on the show. Hello, Flathead Valley. Uh, yes, that was two bear was a, a great, great project. But I'll tell you, there has been no time for that. Oh, no time for that. No time for that. I am hot and heavy in the middle of a political campaign for <laughs> sheriff. And I am running and gunning each and every day. Well, now you're the former under sheriff. I am. So yes. you have a pretty good taste of what this job is all about. You know, I have had a dynamic career and it did. I ran through the ranks, ended at under sheriff and pursued and chased dreams all along the way. And produced, uh, went after a few criminals too. Yeah. You know, I caught a few of those and, and <laughs> some of them still speak to me today. <laughs> really? Well, <that's> good. <laughs> and they don't have to. No, no, that's by choice. And, uh, you know, as I think about my career, that's been one of the more inspiring parts has been those those letters, those cards, and the occasional person that I run into in town that says, thank you for changing my life. Wow, well, that's good. That's and, big... and that change occurred because uh, they were at a spot where someone needed to intervene. And that is a difference in uh, what we picture as law enforcement than the image that the TV really portrays. The, the fun stuff is what we like to watch, but the real stuff occurs in people's lives and their hearts and their minds and their families. Rescuing mm. someone. Yeah, absolutely. That was something that you uh, you were very much a part of. You and Sh Sheriff Curry wanted to get, you wanted to get a helicopter and, and, and be able to fly in and rescue people, and it just wasn't possible within the Sheriff's Department. No, no. We, well, way back in the day, there was an attempt at this through the military, and there just wasn't the funding back, we're talking many, many years ago, almost 40 years ago, in most communities run into those same problems. But uh, if you look back at my life, I was a, I had a unique beginning. I was homeschooled. I tell people uh, I spent my whole childhood really learning to love God, guns, and freedom and discovered public safety along the way when I received public safety as a, as a seven-year-old child hit by a car in Big Fork uh, mm. growing up on Swan River Road. And my substitute teacher at the time was the volunteer paramedic that, that took care of me. I was flown in alert. And then our house burned down when I was 11. So I had a chance wow. early in my life to have significant emotional experiences around public safety, but also loss. But seeing the community surround my family, surround me, lift us up. I went through the second grade twice, best two years of my life. One of them I don't <laughs> remember because of a concussion. Um, wow. But it was an opportunity to see the school step up, my classmates step up, and that was those are my earliest significant memories when I look hmm. back at my youth. So when I was envisioning this opportunity to run for sheriff, which I've been preparing, mentored under three sheriffs, preparing for my whole life, just not knowing really when's going to be the right time. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, the right time to do anything is, is just the moment that you say yes. The, you know in your heart it's time to take action. And I knew when when my vision for this position was to connect the needs of the people with the heart of the community. It's been what I've done my entire career in public safety. When did you start first start flying helicopters? That's what I want to know. Oh, you know, I did that when I was, I started flying when I was 30, so uh, like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was the SAR coordinator at the time. My dad had passed away and I was I was looking at, at preventing loss and trying to manage a 5,200 square mile county and all of the rugged terrain we offer. I, was, I had the, the privilege of working with 150 volunteer search and rescue professionals, over two organizations, three specialty teams. I had, uh, Chuck and I had started the dive rescue team in 2004. We were already doing things crazy. But we couldn't make, I couldn't make this helicopter thing or air thing happen. I'd been, I joined a state SAR board down in Helena. I'd been before the legislature. We'd passed new laws about funding. It still wasn't going to happen. So in, in, uh, after I was 30, in around 2008, right before houses and pricings dropped, <laughs> I sold my house, got a rating, bought my first airplane. And I remember uh, Hugh Rogers, the WAG Park up in, he was Dr. Hugh Rogers. He was, uh, well, he's a vet, doctor of mm -hmm. medicine, veterinary mm -hmm. medicine. He, it was his 50th birthday. He crashed his plane on Hungry Horse Reservoir. It was after my third flight lesson. We were in wow. the air at the same time. This giant storm rolled in out of the south. 
as people who live here know, storms out of the south can be devastating. Yeah. I landed the same time this storm rolled in. I was on my way home when the call came that we had a downed airplane. And uh, I jumped on alert. We tried to make it there. We couldn't make it. Ended up on a snowmobile and spent a couple days once we found him out on the ice. So spent a couple days with him until we could get that storm cleared and, and take care of the accident. But those are the moments when I think back to aviation that just those are the those pivotal emotional moments for me that that tie me to this passion that I have uh, for saving people. So anyways, I sold my house. I bought a plane. I got trained by the state in mountain search and rescue and would fly around Flathead County and surrounding counties doing air search in an airplane. But it just wasn't effective. Mm. And that really was I, I have to say as the under sheriff. Uh, I had a, I had a, some support from some mentors who thought that this was possible. Most everyone else thought I was crazy. And I actually had a ban on how many times I could say helicopter. And I would get banned, and I couldn't say it anymore. Uh, but eventually... Chopper, you sl slip that in? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was hilarious to be in that office. But it worked out great. And I create, built a team. We created a business plan, pitched it to Mike Gogan, who co-founded Two Bear Air Rescue with me before it was ever Two Bear Air Rescue. We built a helicopter. Chuck Curry, Jim Pierce, and I spent the first year, just the three of us, building the system at first of its kind in the world, public-private philanthropic partnership. And it was just a great story of what's possible. And, uh, you know, I look forward to what we can create in many more opportunities like that in our community. And that's what happens when the heart of people comes to life. When passion that's, that just boils up inside of us and explodes out to make the un impossible possible and the unthinkable imaginable. So I, I got to stop asking you about flying, <laughs> even though I, I know you've flown some pretty hairy missions with two bear air and gotten in some pretty crazy places and somehow or another got out. Okay. Yes, we did. It was a long <laughs> journey. And I, uh, if you Google me, you actually get to hear about me, uh, crashing a helicopter in Beaver Lake. And I remember that. It was, it's, you know, I think about the moments that we all talk about the ones that really define us, that we're proud of and, and people give us awards for and things. But re in reality, things like that were a moment of reflection where I considered the fact that every moment in my choice had brought me to that exact place. And I lived through it. And I have doubled down on my passion and my commitment to the community because I realized something that we all get to learn at some point, and that is that our time here is limited. Our time, our lives are more vibrant because we know at some point they're going to end. So we get to choose when to take action, when to do something big, when to take a risk. And I, I every day since that moment has been a gift for me. I've had close calls before, don't get me wrong, yeah. but they didn't make headline news around the nation and around the world. Yeah, I remember when hard that, to pretend that one didn't happen. Yeah, I, I, uh, I remember that very well when that happened. And you were lucky to get out of that thing alive. I was. I was. You I were actually over. underwater. Yep. I rolled over upside down. I was strapped in it and I had to get myself out of it. And little did we know until that carcass of that helicopter was recovered the next day that a rotor blade had actually bent and come through the cockpit windshield. Wow. I got stuck uh, once I got out and I thought I was home clear. I realized my helmet was still plugged in and it wouldn't let me free of the helicopter. I had to take the helmet off as it was, as the helicopter was still sinking. Wow. And, and those are the realities of life. Just when we think that we're in the clear and everything's going our way, we get a little snag. That is never the time to stop fighting. Talk hmm. with me about your vision for the sheriff's office. When I talk about connecting the needs of the people with the heart of the community, let's talk about needs. When we look at our community, we look at school safety, we look at the drug problem, we look at the jail problem, we look at the things that in our community we wish were different. And I think when we look at needs, they're not that, they're very fundamental. We all have a need for variety and we have a need for certainty, significance and connection, growth and contribution. When those aren't in balance in our lives, People make choices that don't benefit them, don't benefit the community or their families. The heart of the community, when I say the heart, it is the mothers, the fathers, the teachers, the students, the doctors, the, the patients. 
It is the visionaries, the entrepreneurs, it's the business owners who all contribute and come together to make this place amazing. We all love the mountains. I mean, the mountains are great, aren't they, guys? Yeah. 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 I mean, even the wildfires, they're, they're interesting. But we think of the clean water. We think of all that. You can't eat it. You can't eat it. And people that live here who, who aren't having their needs met will still take their own life. It's tragic. Yeah. They will act out. They will lash out in violence. They will sabotage their future and their lives by, by experimenting with drugs. They will settle. People will settle for a mediocre relationship because they don't want to lose what they already have, right? Mm -hmm. When I look at the sheriff's office, it's a conduit of connection, communication, leadership, and resources for our community the nonprofit organizations that are taking care. We've got a fundraiser tonight for the Sparrow's Nest, which is housing homeless youth. We just had one for the Samaritan House that is getting people back on their feet. Folks, gentlemen, that is about hope. We have organizations and people that are so passionate and overflowing with, with hope for people, for our community, who understand that a compelling future is what's required for us to take the risks today to create the relationships and create the possibility that we'll get this community and this country into the next chapter, that protect our inalienable rights, our constitutional rights. There's people that are, I was at the Patriot rally last night, men and women standing up for what they believe, sticking a stake in the ground each and every day saying, this is us and we won't budge on our fundamental beliefs that make us who we are. Those are the things that if we connect local government, national government, state government to those people, we can't go wrong. But what I can tell you guys is if you drive a wedge, the tiniest wedge between the government and the people they serve, we begin to create separation and isolation. And that has already begun. We fight every day to keep that wedge out and to remind everyone that the government, local government, the Flathead County Sheriff's Office is here to work for the people. The people don't work for them. Can we translate that maybe into some uh, uh, some uh, actionable things that you you'd bet. like to see happen? You bet. Well, first of all, it requires communication. It requires a sheriff that's willing to stay engaged, and that's I'm happy to do it and excited to do it, and I'm doing it right now and have for mm -hmm. my whole career. Is, is being the face of the organization to the public, hearing their needs, experiencing the changes in the community, and being able to respond with leadership and decisive action. It, it is going to require for us to deal with the fact that we have an overcrowded jail in the summer, which is when we need the room. But we need to make plans to deal with that that are decisive and sound and reasonable. For me, that's, building, that's adding on to our jail and build saving for it and implementing that plan in its current spot with no reason to go rebuild the 150 beds we already own somewhere else and destroy those beds that we already have. That's expensive real estate to construct. That means getting connected back into our schools. I started a school resource officer program in the small town of West Yellowstone when I was a young officer. I know that there are schools just like our hospitals, everyone else, but our schools specifically need a conduit to public safety where they can reach out and there's a, an opportunity for us to understand the boundaries that they operate in and they can understand the resources that we bring so we all operate at peak performance. I want that relationship within our schools communicating with each other and sharing those resources and what works and what doesn't work. Well, personally... Sitting in that chair, the very first man to sit in that chair was Sheriff Chuck Curry when I put this radio station back on the air eight years ago. And I hope that whoever the next sheriff is, if it's you, that you will be just as available as he has been, just as communicative as he has been for us. Absolutely. Well, and I believe if you if you follow the news, I, I've taken every chance I can yeah. to share the good work of the men and women of the sheriff's office, sworn and non-sworn, who are serving our community every day. But the great stories of the of the public too, who are being heroes because they see an opportunity and take action, that is what inspires our next generation to to take a stand and not give up our rights. I, I just right. listened to your news, mm -hmm. but but it's passionate, 
leadership that understands that it's it's the, about 100,000 people and 10 million people that come to the state of Montana to visit. Most of them hit Glacier Park, like 6 million of them. That's a lot of people. It's going to take a lot of energy and a sheriff that's willing to think on that scale and has the connections nationally and internationally. And it's Flathead County. Yes, it is. And we <laughs> and that's why we love it and it's right. special. Jordan White, it's a pleasure to finally get the chance to meet you and talk with you and uh, introduce you to our audience. And uh, we wish you the very safest and very best. And uh, I guess the first thing I'd like to say is thank you for Two Bear Air, for your vision and seeing that through, because uh, that has proven to be just an incredible, incredible fortress for our community. Well, it's a beautiful team. It takes a village to do it. We did it with a team. And uh, June 5th is the election, the primary election. This race for sheriff will be decided in the primary June 5th. Please vote. And I appreciate all your support, guys. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. KGEZ 2020 News Time, 933.